Javicia, how are you doing? First of all, I mean, the, the year's been a little tumultuous, but, but how are you holding it's up? Like, it's been like less than 20 days in the year and it's already been pretty tumultuous. Right. Um, but I'm doing great. I'm actually in uh, Vancouver. We have to go through a quarantine before we um, start shooting. So I'm doing good. Oh, gotcha. Oh, that's cool. And uh, yeah. I mean, you said you guys are having a quarantine for this new show. Are you staying like distance from everybody and have to like sort of stay in your hotel room by yourself for a while? Yeah. Yeah. I'm in my apartment. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Well, that's cool. Yeah. I mean, it's good to be in your apartment and not like, you know, some foreign place. That's nice. Exactly. Exactly. Like when I came here in August, I was in a foreign place. So I prefer to be somewhere that's like a home in some kind of way. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, good. Well, congratulations on Batwoman. You are the first Black Batwoman ever. And we're seeing a lot of firsts for Black men and women. We got our first, you know, Black um, United States Vice President, our first Black Senator in Georgia. What a time to be alive and be a part of history. Yeah, for sure. Even it's interesting because we're just walking in our truth and our skin, you know, but because of the lack of representation, things like this matter, you know, and yeah. it, it's like this weird fold where I wish it didn't matter. I wish that we could just freely be ourselves. But mm -hmm. unfortunately, we're living in a world where, you know, our identity isn't isn't really represented the way it should be. Mm -hmm. Well, but we're glad that, you know, you're trailblazing and sort of adding more representation where we need it. And not just in the, you know, Black woman space, but also in the LGBTQ plus space. I mean, that has to feel good knowing that there's sort of this intersectionality of your trailblazing in that you're representing a lot of different communities. And not only as myself, but as my character. And so yeah. I think that that's really dope, too. You know, when I was growing up, I didn't get to see characters like Ryan. Um, mm -hmm. So to be able to see someone that's so full has so many layers. Um, I think it's important. It's something to really continue to bring to the screen so that we can have more, you know, I, I think at the end of the day, we, we've we always had these individuals. We've always had black people walking around. We've always had LGBTQ people walking around. So it's not mm -hmm. like this is, this is like a population that just showed up out of nowhere. I think that we're moving into a space where we're just showing diversity and it's really important. Exactly, exactly. Well, and you know, you mentioned not seeing, you know, people like you on screen. It, it wasn't just, you know, not seeing, um, you know, LGBTQ plus people. It was like not seeing LGBTQ plus uh, superheroes. So that is a really cool yeah. part is that you got like yeah, a for sure. of the top of everything else. Well, tell me, who are some of the women who inspired you along your journey? Um, my mom is one. My mom is like, when I thought of a superhero growing up, my mother was like my superhero. She, um, she raised my brother and I by herself. She um, was in the army. You know, she just did so much as a woman by herself that I know that my friends that had both parents in their home um, didn't have to, you know, didn't experience. And I'm just so proud of her. And I've always like, she's been my superhero. Outside of my mom, I always admired artists like Eartha Kitt, whom I've said before, just because, you know, mm -hmm. I think that it's one thing to be an artist. It's another to use your art as activism. And women like Eartha Kitt, women like Nina Simone, Billie Holiday, these are women that were willing to say, no, this is what I stand for. You're not going to take my voice, but mm -hmm. then try to, to blind the world to my, to my skin color. Like, that's not what's, what's about to happen. And I think that we're moving kind of back into that world of, like, our ideas as, as creators, especially creators of color, can get taken sometimes, but no one wants to show like, well, this was the black woman that created it. And mm -hmm. so those were the women that kind of inspired me now in my career. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear that. I, and I love that, you know, that each of those women had some true authenticity that they brought to, you know, each of their roles. And, and oh, their for sure. Yeah. Like, yeah I'm well, so excited for the Billie Holiday movie that's coming out. Me and you both just, I'm excited for the, obviously the story too, but the costumes is, is, is yes. Really uh, well, and then and obviously Andre Day, like her voice, ooh, right? Huh? Yes. It's gonna be amazing. Um, yes. But speaking of costumes, tell me about your suit. What was the? Ooh, tell me about the first time you put on that suit and uh, um, and oh. the first time I put the suit on um, was actually when we were just testing the suit. And I remember when I put the suit on, I I looked down, I see this bat across my chest, and I'm like, oh my goodness, like that chills. This is this is really, this is real. Like this is happening. Mm -hmm. So I kind of freaked out and you, you always get this like moment of feeling like the responsibility of being a superhero. You are a superhero in this moment, even <laughs> as Javicia, now go save the world. 
Um, but then I did the cow separately. Like I tried the cow on at a different time and we were actually doing a fitting and like, let's say this is the, the mirror. I, I put the cow on and I was turned this way because I didn't want to see it until it was completely on. And I turned back around. I looked at myself in the mirror and I just started laughing because it was just like, without the cow, it looks just like Batman. I mean, without the wig, it looks just like Batman. So wow. I look in the mirror and like, dang, like, this is like, I'm a part of the bat family. Like, this is so dope. I just yeah. couldn't stop smiling. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and speaking of the hair, uh, I saw a photo of you in the costume with like this huge curly natural fro. And it made me so excited, obviously, because I have natural hair, but also because I think that, you know, part of being a black woman is you know, you, we have a, a variety of different hair textures. And it was so cool to see that. It was like, honestly, it was really scary only because, you know, as a black woman, um, when you wear your hair natural and big, you feel like you're taking up space. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when we're younger that's the scariest thing is to take up space is to is to steal attention because we just want to blend in you know um and even as a grown woman a lot of us are scared to take up space and mm -hmm. so naturally ryan's batwoman takes up space with her hair you know naturally you have to widen the shot a little bit naturally you have to leave room for the hair and um at first it it it, it, it felt like Am, is this too much? But then it's like, no, this is a representation of a black woman that's a superhero. And why is it ever too much? Like we have super female superheroes all the time with their hair long and straight. And the idea that, you know, if they're fighting their hair can still get grabbed, you know? So we got to take that idea out of the, out of the mix because when you're a superhero, your hair just does not get grabbed and never gets touched. It's perfect. Um, so what's okay. the difference between long straight hair and a big curly Afro? It's all hair that's out that could get grabbed. And it's just, it doesn't happen. The, I think the bad guys know. They're like, one thing I'm not going to do is touch a black woman's hair. So I'll fight exactly. her. I'll do everything. I, I'll even try to kill her. But I will <laughs> not touch her hair. <laughs> For the cardinal rules of-, of It is a cardinal yeah. rule. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Um, oh my God. That's all. And did you help to design your, your own costume? So what, the, what, the, what that is about is that um, Caroline Dries, our amazing show creator, we we were talking before um, we started to film and she just said that she wanted a new suit for Ryan. And we were kind of like trying to think of ideas. And we were really actually inspired by um, fan art. So we had gotten all of this fan art after the casting announcement. And because my hair is in this big, it's kind of like how yours is now, it was in this big curly like fro. Uh, mine was just like big though. This big curly <laughs> fro in the picture, all of the fan art included that big curly fro. So that's what really gave us the idea that our Batwoman would have that look. That it's so and it actually the same that the the wig maker for um for Batwoman was the same lady that did the hair for that picture. So yeah. it was like, yeah, isn't that cool? So it was just like so we cool. had right, right. So we had like um that that we were inspired by fan art, and so even the suit itself has a little bit of a fan art inspiration. And then our show creator Caroline and our our lead costume designer, Maya Manny, came together and created the, the actual suit. Oh my God, that is so cool. But that's awesome. Like, hey fans, you helped create this awesome. They, I, I hope they know that. They really did. Yeah, they need to. That's, that's incredible. I saw a video of you working out. Have you always been super fit or did you like turn it up for this role? Did you have any like action sort of uh, training or anything that you went into before, before uh, assuming the role? The thing is, is like working out fitness in general has always kind of been like an outlet for me. I ran mm -hmm. track growing up. And then when I moved to LA and, you know, your career is kind of like, oh, okay, what's going on? You know, that was like my outlet. That was my release. So I've been working out forever. Um, I started martial arts two years ago oh just God. because I was intrigued. I come from a martial arts family. My brother um, used to fight semi-pro and then now he owns his own gym and he's a Muay Thai teacher. So it was always something that like I had been surrounded by something that's in my blood. So I started to train Muay Thai. And then within last year, I started, I had just started the bow staff right before the role of Batwoman came around. So coming into this, it's like, I kind of pretty much understand the language as far as when you're, when you're familiar with something, um, our, 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 our stunt team, we can communicate back and forth and I understand what they're saying. And I, and I get how my body should move and things like that. However, it is completely different when you're doing stunts because you can't actually hit someone. So it's all about learning how to pull your punches and make things look like they're landing, even though they're not. So it's definitely still been a like a growing experience. Yeah, well, that's so cool. Yeah, I saw the video of you like flipping the tire and I was like, oh, that doesn't surprise me at all that you said that you were a track athlete. I also ran track. <laughs> I'm like, look at that. Yeah, 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 right? I think 
when you're a young athlete, it definitely like it trains you in your mentality going into life about what work <laughs> ethic is and what taking care of yourself means. Yeah. What were your events when you ran? I ran the 400, 800, one mile, two mile cross country. <laughs> 100, oh my God, you were a true like, The 800 was like strength. my competitive race. Yeah, oh my God. That's it great. does take mental strength. Yeah, it does, absolutely. Um, well, let's talk about more, more, a little bit more about your character. Is your Batwoman influenced by any of the actors who played Batman or who played Catwoman or any other superheroes? Is there like a particular Batman you gravitate to more? You know, so she, I wouldn't say that Ryan's Batwoman is influenced by any other Bat character um, just because a lot of the other Bat characters kind of have a background of prestige and money um, and she comes from the opposite world. So I really had to dive into the work myself. Um, no cheating for that one. Um, <laughs> but I did what I did do, like the world of Gotham and the energy of Gotham, that's very specific. You know what I mean? And to understand, to go from... A, a very realistic show like God Friend to Me where we're talking about, you know, normal real life problems to move into a show where we're talking about like people that can fly and people that can like, you know, do things that just aren't normal human things. Like it takes, it takes making sure that you completely can like dive into that world um, unrestricted. And so with that, I did watch a lot of um, Batman, Gotham um, to kind of like lose myself in the world of Gotham. Yeah. That way, yeah. You know, it's just like, it has to, everything has to seem normal. Nothing can seem like a shock. Yeah, exactly. Well, and I read that you were like a big fan of like the Christian Bale Batman and, and watching some of those, which I am obsessed with. So I read that. See, on, like, and, and, and that is how I felt, right? So, because I grew up watching Batman and like the last Batman that I really remember that I gravitated towards was the Christian Bale Batman. But a lot of that has to do with like supervillains. I'm really into supervillains. I'm actually more into supervillains than I am into superheroes. <laughs> like for, for the for the whole like Batman world, because I think that the Batman world of supervillains is literally like they're the best. They're the most epic, they're the most colorful, they're, they're the most entertaining to watch. And so Heath Ledger and I'm and um Tom Hardy were his supervillains. So of course I loved those Batman yeah, um, yeah. villains. Well, and have you seen, you know, any of, uh, you know, what, what were your thoughts on like Robert Pattinson as the new Batman? Have you seen? I can't of wait. I can't wait. First of all, I'm, <laughs> I'm always so ready to give anyone a chance, like mm -hmm. at an opportunity to kill a role. Like that's fun. You know, we, we have, there are certain things that have just been done over and over and over by some of the same people. So I'm excited always to see um, a different, a different energy. And I actually just, just watched him in Tenet like a few days ago mm -hmm. and He's so good in it. And it was like something different than what I had seen because I honestly hadn't seen anything um, really since like Twilight. So I'm super excited to see him in this because I he's a transformative actor and I look forward to seeing how he transforms into our Batman. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Well, I'm excited too. Um, now on another note, let's talk about your background because you used to have a job in DC in the government before you came to LA to try your hand at acting. What did you do in DC? So I, when I graduated from Hampton University, I moved back to DC. That's actually where I'm from. Um, and I, like everybody else that's from there, I got a job with the government contracting for the army specifically. And I paid soldiers who were under stop loss when um, the war in Iraq started. Oh, gotcha. So are, do you ever, you know, think back to that role and think, you know, I missed that role or, or do you think like, I love where I am here and there's no going back now? Well, I specifically worked with soldiers who had passed away. So um, I, I, for me, it was more about contacting their family to tell them, hey, we have something for you. Um, and I think that's kind of what moved me to want to follow my dreams because I, they were so young. So many of them were so young and they weren't soldiers that died in war. They were soldiers that died when they got back. And so with that, I knew what it meant to, to live. I could, I, it inspired me to want to live, you know, even if it was living for, for, for them. Like it, it, it matters that you you follow your dreams you know what I mean I think that we have one life and that one life is it, it should be lived to its fullest as long as it's safe for everyone surrounding you and yeah. um that is actually what inspired me to pack my stuff and go wow that's an incredible story well and and speaking of DC um you know it's been, it's been in the news lately just last week with the riots there uh, what were your thoughts when you were watching things unfold there Ooh, child. <laughs> that's a that thought was, in of itself. Um, 
I just, you know, I don't, <laughs> I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed in us, um, but I'm not, there, there, there's so much work that needs to be done that it doesn't surprise me that things are blowing up the way they're blowing up. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a huge James Baldwin fan. And one of the things he always talks about is the idea that we can't fix our problems if we can't admit that there is a problem. Um, and I think that that's kind of where we have to go back to. We have not admitted the, 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 the true problem that we're dealing with in our country, the true problems that we're dealing with in our country. We kind of like just cover it up and keep it moving. And I think that until we start to deal with those issues face on and admit when we were wrong, there's no real growth. It's almost like if someone hurt your feelings and they never really apologize, but you still have to hang out with them. Yeah, yeah. I You're going to have some, you know, some, some, some pent up, animosity because they never really said sorry but we got to move on like nothing happened yeah exactly I agree I agree um well you know maybe we should bring in Batwoman to to watch over and make sure that there's no violence there you know she'll make sure some people are held accountable I think that's really the bigger issue people are yeah. being held accountable and she'll definitely make sure it happens <laughs> oh yeah yeah strong women like that um well you know Javicia you've been really busy tell me about your new project that you're working on Black Excellence Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> How did you know about that? That's so cool. Um, so <laughs> I, um, I am making my directorial debut. And um, directing is a huge passion of mine. I've been like, if, if anyone that directs me, they'll tell you because I'm all up on them like, oh, okay, so why'd you do that? <laughs> you know, um, so I finally got my opportunity um, over the summer. And we created this amazing short um, created by my best friend, Daryl Wesley. And, um, and yeah, it's so good. It's about a family that, you know, when I was growing up, my mother was super big on all of us eating dinner at the dinner table together. And I never really understand what it meant until now I'm older and I get it. So we created this project where it's like, it's this family that never eats dinner at the dinner table together. And they're dealing with these major problems, and these major demons, and they don't even know that each other um, each other's issues because they never talk about it. And mm -hmm. I feel like your family, like that's your team, like that's your home team, that's your security, that's your bodyguard, that's your therapist, that's your best friend, you know? Mm -hmm. But you, a lot of times we don't know that because we don't get to tap in with each other to even be able to support each other. And yeah. so you really watch this family hit a peak of, 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 of all of their, you know, their problems. And then after it hits this peak, um, the, the baby girl, it's a family of five, it's three kids and, and two parents. Um, the baby girl is watching this TV show the entire time all of this is happening. Her parents are arguing, her, her sister's upstairs, hating how she looks, hating the color of her skin. The son hates himself. Like, so she's like watching TV as all, all of this is happening. And there's a sitcom family that, that's eating dinner at the table together and they're laughing and they're talking about things. And it inspires her to go sit at the table. And so the film then starts all over with her again from the very beginning and instead of it going through instead she gets up and she sits at the table then the son that had been contemplating some dark things decides well my little sister's at the table so i'll sit at the table then the mom comes to sit at the table then the dad comes to sit at the table and the sister comes to sit at the table and you see this beautiful moment where you can tell like it doesn't mean that the problems have disappeared but they know that they have someone there to be able to pull them through it and that they'll be okay it's just like it's such a beautiful short all of like all of my loved ones are a part of it. You know, the cast members are people that I care about so it's deeply. Awesome. My best friend is the writer, I'm directing it. So it's just like this amazing passion project and it comes out February 14th. It will be streaming and I'm gonna drop the link on my Instagram. Yay, oh, I'm so excited. Yes. Thank That's you for bringing that up. And it sounds like it, it it addresses many of the problems that the black community faces. And that's so cool that you like brought in your friends and your family too, to make it like, you know, group thing. That's, that's incredible. I'm excited for you. And you said streaming February 14th on any yeah, streaming February services. 14th. So yeah, I'm going to drop the link on my Twitter, my Instagram. So anyone that's watching this, just go check those out and you'll be able to find the link. Um, we're also going to drop the trailer probably tomorrow, either today or tomorrow. So this is really, really exciting. I'm <laughs> like, I'm, I'm so excited for everyone to see it. And it's not just facing Black families. Yeah, this is, per, this is specifically a Black family, but I think it's facing families. I think another issue in our world, in our country is that we, especially now with the pandemic happening, we can't even get to our families. Mm -hmm. um, we, we we're missing that we're missing what that was we're missing that family matters you know step by step full house type of situation that really makes people feel um like they belong to a tribe and I think that what I've learned living in LA and away from my family is being a part of a tribe is very important it's it's, yeah. it's innate 
Yeah. Well, I think it's something that we're all learning and, you know, it's, it's a nice silver lining coming out of the pandemic is, is relearning that the importance of family and togetherness. Thank you for watching. If you want more extra, hit the subscribe button and the bell so you'll never miss a video.